Good morning, lovelies. As you can see, I've got some new technology that has allowed me to move back to the video format rather than the podcast format I was playing around with earlier on this channel. Hopefully, this will work out and be a permanent thing, but technology has never been good to me, so why would it stay good for me now? Today, we will be talking about my top 10 least favorite tropes in regards to cisgender female characters. Obviously, tropes and cliches surrounding transgender and non-binary characters are a whole other monster that deserves its own video, so we're not going to be talking about those today. Before we get started, remember to click that subscribe button and ring the bell if you haven't already. Normally, I would say I post videos the first Sunday of every month, but I'm actually moving to a different schedule now where I'm going to be posting twice a month instead. Quarantine has made me a little stir crazy, so that you got that to thank for that. You can also check out my twice weekly written blog at dzamarie.com for more content. And you can follow me on social media. My links to Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook will all be in the description. This list of hated tropes is not exhaustive or all-encompassing. They're just my personal pet peeves. Feel free to list yours in the comments. Also, if you know of any books, movies, or TV shows in the sci-fi fantasy genres that do not have any of these tropes, or they turn them on their head or subvert them in any way, please list them in the comments so I can check them out. Thank you. Number one, the strong female character. We all know this bitch. She's very cookie cutter, two-dimensional, Really, she's just a trim woman in black leather. A lot of times she'll be kind of like the Star Wars troopers of fiction. Everyone says that she's amazing, badass, highly trained, genetically modified, whatever. But what we see is the opposite. She's about as useful as a bucket with a hole in it. Even if she is useful and genuinely a badass and maybe even contributes to the plot, she still won't be as inherently good or useful or efficient as the male lead and will usually require him to rescue her. So what's the point of having a, a strong character if she needs the dude to swoop in and, and save the day? What's really happened here is that writers, male writers, heard the cries for strong female character and thought we meant a physically strong character that embodies all of the hated tropes that we were actually protesting against. What we really want is a strong character who happens to be female. There is a difference. If you don't know the difference, you have a lot of writing classes to do. Number two, the lone vagina. More tasteful, classy people will call this the token girl. I am not one of them. This character only exists so the writers can pat themselves on the back for writing an entire female in their story. I've already done a video on this trope and all the problems with it and why I hate it and why everyone should and can do better. So I'm just gonna leave it at this. Women are half of the human population. They could make up half of your fan base if you wrote them properly. Number three, the damsel in distress. Yet another trope that I've already done a lengthy video on. To be clear, I don't really mind it when the femme character is damseled, so long as it is written well and the men are damseled at least as much as she is. What I do mind and cannot stand is when the woman character is written solely for the purposes of needing the man to rescue her. Just replace her with a MacGuffin or a big bag of money. You'll save yourself a lot of time. She usually needs to be rescued to raise narrative stakes or because the bad guy needs a hostage because the male lead is crushing on her, in which case she will double as another hated trope of mine. Number four, the love interest. This is the female character who exists solely to give the male lead and the male audience a hard on. Again, having a romantic subplot in your story can be good and even add layers to your story if it's done right, but it only works if she is a whole character who has a life outside of her romance. Does she have any hobbies, goals, or life aspirations? 
does she contribute to the actual story? If not, rewrite your damn character. Number five, the pretty idiot. This character makes all the dumb decisions. She usually appears in horror movies. She's literally just an idiot, but everyone puts up with her because she's hot. Do you need the bad guys to find our heroes who are trying to hide? The pretty idiot's the one who lights the flare. Do you need a character to ask a really basic question so you can write exposition on a topic that your audience honestly probably already knows about? The pretty idiot's your gal. Do you need someone to get herself captured so that the hero now has a personal reason to storm the bad guy's lair? The pretty idiot doesn't even know the meaning of the word self-preservation. She will be glad to help you out. This is even worse when the character is supposed to be some sort of scientist. Like someone who is paid to use their brain. I just hate dumb female characters in general. You don't have to have every single woman in your story be a certified genius, but at least have some sort of head on her shoulders. Otherwise, it just perpetuates the stereotype that all women are dumb. Number six, the punching bag. This character exists solely to be killed and or raped and or abused for no reason other than to show how tragic this world is or how horrible that villain is. Now, there is a sort of exception to this rule. If the character has a whole arc dedicated to overcoming their abusive past or getting out of a really nasty relationship or something like that. You know, a, a point A is a horrible place where she is being regularly abused and point B is she gets out of there. That is great. I eat that shit up. I love it when that happens. What I don't like is when she starts at point A and then never goes anywhere. Like she literally just exists to be an example of how crappy the situation is. You do realize that human beings have a self-preservation instinct. We want to survive. We want to be happy and live in a good place. And if we're in a bad place, we will do everything we can to get out of there. Why does she not stand up for herself? Even if she is like, too scared to properly stand up for herself or even necessarily too scared to leave she can find other ways like maybe she calls her friends for help or you know maybe she can't leave because she has kids so she has to focus on getting those kids out first and then she'll get out of there or something give me anything come on women do not exist just to be your punching bag number seven the Fixer. This is the character who manages to fix everyone's deep psychological issues just by hanging out with them. Oftentimes she doesn't even try. Her angelic glow is enough to fix everything. Other times she tries way too hard, beyond the point of sanity or self-preservation. This makes her double as the punching bag. She sees the good in him, but that only works if the audience also sees the good in him. If he's just an asshole, she should leave. This character is usually some sort of Mary Sue, not the overly powerful type, but the type where everyone loves her, even if she's as useful as a bag of rocks. Actually, bag of rocks has some use. At least you can use them to like, you know, whap, hit someone. This trope usually happens in anime or manga, but it gets plenty of use in Western media too. This perpetuates yet another, much more harmful stereotype, and that is who needs therapy or counseling when you can just get yourself a girlfriend who will fix all of your deep psychological trauma. That's not how it works. Number eight, the woman who cannot get along with other women. The writer wants a cat fight, and by God, he's gonna get it. Not all women get along with other women. All right, there are plenty of gals I know, personally, who I just can't stand to be around. They're annoying, they're obnoxious, they're bitches, all right, they, they exist, all right? But in a zombie apocalypse, a war, an alien invasion, if our survival depends on us working together, you can bet your ass we're gonna check our differences at the door and work together. Now, this is different from a female protagonist going against a female villain. That's something else entirely. If they're like actively opposed to each other, then that that's fine. This trope is about 
women characters who are supposed to be on the same side. But instead of working together, they are constantly at each other's throats. Not even like the small scale bickering or the emotional fight where like you got the two characters who are like, you know, really going at it and then like a big reveal happens and like you suddenly understand this character a little bit more and you might not be best friends at the end of this argument, but you understand each other better and you're gonna work a little more smoothly together. But instead, what this trope does is it's just like constantly bickering and snarking at each other and just refusing to see eye to eye, refusing to work together. Even if everything else, you need to work together in order to survive. And they just don't. And usually at least one of them dies because of it. Do not base your characterization on the Real Housewives reality television. Number nine, gorgeous but doesn't know it. You can always spot the mean girl in the novel by the fact that she's gorgeous and she knows it. The main character will be gorgeous but not know it. There's a prejudice against women who are confident in their appearance. It's often mistaken for vanity, but taking pride in your appearance is not in and of itself a fault. There are people out there who take it to an extreme and it does become a fault, but for the most part, it's just confidence. I am creating a YouTube video with my unwashed hair and my super ratty oops did I roll my eyes out loud t-shirt that could be seen by millions of people and I don't give a shit because I'm just confident in my appearance. This is what I look like. Take it or leave it. Humility is a virtue, but it's not the only virtue. Insecurity about a female character's appearance is very easy drama and inner conflict. There are plenty of women out there who are insecure about their appearance. And the advertising companies don't make that any easier. The problem is, if a woman is genuinely beautiful, like Lindsay Lohan or Angelina Jolie gorgeous, unless she has a deep-seated psychological issue, she's gonna know it. Everyone will have told her about it. This does not make her a bad person. Finally, number 10, the puppet. This character has no agency. She's also usually the pretty idiot and or the damsel in distress and or the love interest. So I particularly hate her. She might as well be replaced with a pile of gold or a particularly good looking lamp. She has no agency and contributes nothing to the story. She makes no decisions for herself or the characters around her. Stuff happens to her, but she doesn't do anything to stop or change it. The most agency she has is running away from the bad guys and crying on the male lead's shoulder. But half the time she won't even be able to get away from the bad guys. She'll just get captured and need the male lead to save her. And then she'll cry on his shoulder. This is especially vexing if the puppet is the main character we're supposed to be rooting for. We read books and watch movies and shows to watch characters do shit. Either have this character contribute something or cut her from the story. So those are my top 10 most hated female character tropes. Really, what it comes down to is this. Make your female characters people, not props. Write more than one. You can do it. I believe in you. And have a woman you know read your manuscript. She will tell you when you're screwing up. That's all I've got. Remember to subscribe to this channel and check out my social media links for more content. And if you want early access to my videos and even more content, check me out on Patreon. All the links are in the description. Bye lovelies.